Hi, my name's Tom. Uh, I'm a um, second year student at Warwick Medical School. Before coming here, I was a HCA for a period of about five years, on and off. Uh, and before that, um, back in the, the ancient past, I was uh, a psychology student down at Sussex. But that was a long, long time ago. So did you always want to do medicine? Absolutely not. Um, HCA was a, uh, a, an issue of convenience, really. Um, I, I um, came out of my first degree with not a whole lot of idea, really, what I wanted to do. And um, I kind of wanted to work in healthcare, so I got to work as a support worker um, for learning disabilities. Uh, and then I was, a, I was a forensic HCA at a psychiatric hospital. Uh, and then after that, uh, I was in A&E for a little bit and I was just bouncing around. I didn't really have much idea. I didn't really want to be a medical student when I first went to, uh, to do my first degree. That's, that's something that a lot of people in medicine, in graduate entry medicine especially, say they've always wanted to be a medic and it was always sort of part of the long-term plan. That absolutely wasn't me. I just sort of bumbled around and ended up here. Why come to medical school then? Um, well... I sort of wanted to do a PhD originally and I was all kind of set up and geared up and ready to do that. Um, that was going to be in psychology because, you know, it's quite interesting and I quite enjoyed my first degree. Um, it was quite good. So I uh, got sponsorship for that and then I actually realised halfway through that that I didn't really, I wasn't really super keen on the academic lifestyle. Um, it wasn't for me. I. I it's, it, it's funny because every, every job that you have, you're helping somebody and, you know, um, with academic work, you're going to have a benefit to whatever it is that you're studying, but you're just not necessarily going to see it. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite a selfish person and I would like to uh, be able to see the people that I'm helping and interact with them. So I thought, hey, healthcare. Uh, and then what happened was I got to thinking, well, what can I do in healthcare? And um, I realised I had a psychology degree, so I thought maybe I'll become a clinical psychologist. Um, and that's kind of what got me into the forensic HCA thing that was, that was at the psychiatric hospital. Um, but as it turns out, getting into clinical psych is actually really hard. Um, it's, it's probably harder than medicine. Um, credit to anybody who can do it. Um, so um, after a few years of um, trying to uh, get a job as an assistant psychologist, which is sort of the first step onto that career path, I uh, decided to uh, um, have a go at medicine. I quite like the way that the, doc the doctors worked anyway. Um, sort of in all the jobs that I had, I saw quite a lot of the, uh, the medics and really appreciated the way that they worked, you know, making the diagnosis, clinical leadership, um, you know, being the, uh, being the person who kind of um, understands things and operates more at a, uh, a strategic level, um, sort of within the MDT. So that's what drew me onto it. I, I, I quite enjoyed that way of working. How old were you when you came to med school and how old will you be when you graduate? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, oh God, right, that's a different... Yeah, okay, so 20, 27 was when I started uh, and I'm now 28 and by the time I graduate, I'll be an F1 when I'm 31. How do you feel then about coming to med school a little bit older? Uh, for graduate entry medicine, I'm probably, above, I'm probably just above average sort of in the, in, the, in the downward sloping side of the bell curve. To be honest, I don't really notice it. There's so many different people coming to these places. Um, it's, I, I certainly don't think it should put anybody off. Um, I, 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 I forget that people here are you know, much older or much younger than me. And you know, plenty of people are much older than me. I'm certainly not, uh, certainly not one of the very old people on the course. What's your previous career and experience given you then when it comes to being on the ward? A lot of clinical experience. Um, so I spent a lot of time working in clinical settings. Probably, I, I would say that there's quite a transition in med school, based on my experience anyway, between the, um, the um, pre-clinical and the clinical years. And there's quite a uh, sort of a watershed moment when you switch over to clinical uh, learning when you spend most of your time on the wards and you, you know, you have to get used to the way that a hospital works. There's a, a bit of a rhythm to it. Um, 
and uh, it can be it can be quite quite jarring. I think I think the transition for me was was probably a bit easier than most because it was kind of like coming home a little bit. So I was, it was kind of like just going back to work and getting back into the environment that I was uh, that I was most used to. So um, I'd say that it's probably helped me in that area. On the other hand, being further removed from my previous degree meant that I had a, an awful lot to uh, to reacclimatize myself. I had an awful lot to do to reacclimatize myself to actually learning full time again. So that was quite a tricky little transition there. How did you find leaving your old career and making that choice? Some people have said they found it very stressful. Yeah, it probably was. Um, I've been out of learning for um, a period of five years and it was, it, yeah, it, it was definitely a challenge um, coming back into it, especially such a full on course as medicine as well. It's very, very intense. Um, but uh, I think I had always seen myself coming back into education at some point anyway, so it wasn't really a shock in terms of my expectations. Um, it was just a matter of, oh, what am I going to do? Well, I never really saw myself as a medical student. Um, for starters, I, I, you know, I saw myself as a, a lot of things before um, becoming a medical student, but I, I, I certainly didn't have that as part of the plan. What's been your favourite part of the course so far? Ooh, that's difficult. Um, are we talking like anatomy or like drugs or oh god, um, doctory stuff? <laughs> just just doing doctory stuff. Um, so actually getting to learn procedures. Uh, we're just really starting to get into that now. Really at the start of second year, we're starting to see um, you know ABGs, venipuncture, putting cannulas in. Um, you know, that, that, these are all things that I saw people doing um, when I was applying for medicine and I would see the medics doing it at my uh, work and I'd just be like, wow. So what's been your favourite procedure to perform then? <laughs> DRE. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, um, oh gosh. I can't say history taking, can I? That's a cop out. Yeah, you can. I love taking histories. Just the basic doctory stuff. So, you know, not, 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 nothing fancy, you know, we haven't been doing intramuscular injections or setting broken bones or anything cool like that just yet. But um, yeah, just doing, you know, basic history examination. There's just something very, very, very cool about that. You feel, um, you know, um, quite, quite, quite privileged to, uh, to, to get to do the basic, the basic medicine. Am I to take it that you're enjoying second year more than first year then? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. First year was like, I'm, I'm sure if I did it again, it would be um, much, uh, much different. I think a lot of it was the, um, you know, the, the, the sudden rush of cold water that comes with, oh God, I'm back in, I'm back at university. And, you know, I used to do psychology, so that wasn't, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say that psychology is easy, but it's not as full on as medicine is. And so I, I had to learn to learn. Um, I had to relearn how to learn, but I also had to learn a, a lot of new things. You know, my work ethic um, had to be a lot stronger than it was previously. Uh, the workload's a lot, a lot bigger, uh, a lot more full on. So, what works for you then? What for um, for, uh, for for me personally? I'm a uh, I'm I, I'm a repetition guy. It's it's nothing groundbreaking to be honest. Um, I I like taking the time to think about things, uh, making my own notes, drawing diagrams. It took a long time. That's the that's the important thing to remember. It takes a long time to actually get to the uh, get to the point where you know yourself, especially if you've come out of uni and then you're going back in. Uh, it takes it, it takes quite a bit of time, um, and it, it was I was well into the you know I, I was almost at exams in first year before I really knew whether I was uh, knew the what I considered to be a pretty good way to uh, to go about learning medicine. Is there a particular specialty that interests you? No, I'm really really trying to avoid specialty uh, specialty chat there's things that interest me but like I get a new one every week like medicine's quite interesting because there's there's so many different um, subspecialties so many places you can go with it you know you don't even have to practice clinically you could you could be a pathologist you could be a researcher you could be an academic um, a teacher uh, for instance you know there's there's so many different ways that you can go and there's so much experience that you get as a medical student you're quite lucky in a way because you, you you get to see all of it you get to experience all of it 
Um, so I'm very deliberately avoiding pigeonholing myself and saying, all right, I want to be a, 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 an orthopedic surgeon or a, an anaesthetist or a dermatologist or a psychiatrist. Um, I, I don't want to pick a specialty yet because that would close me off to the wealth of experiences that are available. And there's so many um, like, that I haven't even done yet. You know, like I, I, I did psychiatry for the first time last week, loved it, but you know, I still haven't done um, any um, obstetrics. Uh, I still haven't done any um, nephrology, I still haven't done any dermatology, I still haven't really done any neuro, you know, there's there's so much that I haven't even experienced yet. I don't know if I like it, I don't know if I'm any good at it really. What about anything that doesn't interest you? Don't really like the idea of being a surgeon, uh, just because I don't like standing up for too long. Um, but neurosurgery you get to sit down, don't you, so there's that. What would you say to anyone in a similar position to you? I think there's this perception that medicine is this, you know, for, for, for a lot of people it's this holy grail that they've worked towards for a long, long time, for many, many years. Um, but you don't always have to have planned it. Um, you know, just because you get the idea a bit later than somebody else doesn't mean that you're necessarily barred from entry. How many times did you end up applying for grad medicine? Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, twice. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I got rejected the first time around. Don't be disheartened. Oh, I just covered my mic, sorry. I'll say that again just because it sounds like it's quite an important thing. Yeah, so I, I, I um, applied twice, actually. Uh, I uh, got rejected the first time. Uh, at Warwick, um, I, made it to, uh, I made it to interviews uh, and uh, I didn't make it through on the first time. I made it through on the second time, though. Um, so don't be disheartened. You know, a lot of people have to try more than twice uh, to, uh, to get in. It's, it's grad entry especially is very competitive, so. What's your memory like of the interviews? Did you enjoy it? I mean, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of over and done with now. Uh, it was quite enjoyable, I suppose. It was, it was nice to, because coming at it from, I suppose the advantage, if you can call it that, um, from um, being on a course, say, I don't know, biomedical science or, you know, um, biology or chemistry or something like that, um, you will, or just applying straight from university in general, you're going to meet people who probably going to meet people who are doing the same thing. I mean, with biomed, there's quite a high percentage of people who actually want to go over into medicine. So you, you're probably going to meet quite a few people. Uh, I had not, I, the only chance I got to meet people who were also applying to medicine was being at interviews for medicine. So that was quite, that, that, that was quite enlightening just to kind of get to chat to other people about their experiences. How did that feel then, that getting rejected? So, I mean, I, it was disheartening. Inadequacy is something that is, that feelings of inadequacy are something that's quite inevitable um, when you're entering into such a competitive field and, you know, rejection doesn't make you feel good. Um, that's just how it is. So, uh, no, I, I, I didn't take it shockingly badly, but um, it, it, it was an effort to dust myself off and, um, and get back into it. I think there's a feeling that everyone gets, whether you're applying to medicine or doing medicine, that, or even just thinking about it, that, uh, you know, I'm, 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 am I good enough? Um, am I making the right decision? Do I, do I have any right uh, to, to, to give this a try? And um, yeah, the, uh, the, probably the process of actually getting in is the biggest hurdle to get over in terms of uh, believing in yourself. <laughs> So getting into medical school, I you know had been out of uni for a very long time, and I found that one of the one of the nicest things was that how welcoming medics are to um, one another, and uh, how how much of a uh, I don't know is it fair to say is it fair to say family vibe there is? We actually have medic families. Um, it's it's sort of a peer to peer mentoring scheme. Um, but it's affectionately known as medic families. So, uh, so <laughs> me and Ollie are um, medic husband and wife. Uh, <laughs> which way around. <laughs> uh, and we've got two beautiful boys. What do you do societies wise? What do I do societies wise? I'm not doing medicine. I play Dungeons and Dragons. No, um, I, do I, do, do. I do actually play Dungeons and Dragons. We're in the same D&D group. Uh, I am involved, I'm involved with mostly street doctors now. Um, so I uh, am the co-team lead for the Warwick Branch of Street Doctors, uh, which is a um, charity that 
runs across the UK, uh, mostly made up of medical students, some nursing students, and we've got some paramedics now as well, so you know, um, it's spreading. Um, and what we do is we go out and teach basic first aid to um, groups of uh, young people who are considered to be at risk uh, of uh, being involved in, in violence. Uh, and we have a particular focus on managing a bleeding casualty, specifically someone who's been stabbed. Uh, actually, um, and that's hugely rewarding work. There's so many good opportunities to get involved in uh, in giving back um, at medical school. Try and spend time doing something that's completely unrelated to medicine. So you know, sports. Um, sports are another thing that's huge at medical schools, probably for that reason. Um, I do BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Painting's nice. Um, you, you've got to have something that's completely unrelated to medicine though. Um, it's, it's all very well doing, you know, charity work and specialty interest societies like, you know, Psych Sock, Neuro Sock, um, GP Sock, um, but you, you, you've got to have one that's just not medicine. Yoga, that's another good one. Uh, medics love yoga for some reason. All those aggressive type A people like to find a way to unwind. If you could change the NHS in one way, what would it be? Mental health is, it, it's something that I feel strongly about coming from a psychiatric HCA background, coming from, um, you know, a psychology background. But to be honest, just being a medical student, like it is very stressful. Um, you, you, you do find your mental health and your well-being being tested. And you actually have to really try to keep your well-being on top of things. Like it's, 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 it's got to be priority number one, actually. You've got to, that's, and that's quite difficult. I mean, talking about aggressive type A personalities, you know, you, uh, you get quite a lot of those at medical school and you actually have to remember that actually being good at medicine is priority number two because you're no good to anybody uh, if you are burnt out. And it is easy to burn out, even as a student. It's probably easier as a doctor, but I don't know about being a doctor. I know about being a medical student and it's, it's very easy to uh, burn out as a medical student. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to get in touch uh, and ask any questions then my email address is somewhere um, around here uh, and uh, yeah uh, thank you for watching